Hello everyone. Hi guys. Uh, most of you know that yesterday we had a few friends over for lunch. Yes. <laughs> and it was a real great time. So uh, take a look. I'll say it again guys. You know the big surprise moving here to Darwin is all the very nice people that we're meeting and uh, developing friendships. Yes, yeah, so we're meeting a lot of nice people, nice couple, and uh, you know, we made more friend here. Than in New York. Than in New York, because all we do in New York is work. Yeah, that's work, it. work, work. That, that's a really good point. Yeah. And uh, you know, what's really nice too, guys, is uh, you know, when you retire here, uh, we all have something in common, right? We all uh, came from a foreign country, uh, worked all our life, uh, you know, 99% is married or girlfriend is Filipina, uh, and we all have similar stories. Different to some degree, but similar, and that, you know, just makes the friendship grow faster because yes. uh, we have a lot in common. So again, it's the big surprise. So if you're thinking about moving here, you're going to experience that as well uh, if indeed you move into an area where there is a lot of expats. So uh, that's something uh, to, uh, to consider uh, for sure. And also uh, what we're doing is we've met so many couples, so many nice people. Uh, we're inviting like six to eight people trying to control uh, the size of the party <laughs> to make it easier on Wilma because she's the one that does the cooking. Uh, but we're like inviting like three to four couples at a time. Uh, to come and, and spend the day with us and then you know we usually have a nice lunch and then we go swimming and you know just kind of hang out the guys all uh, you know go to one area of the house <laughs> or outside and then the girls go to a different area and they you know we just have a nice afternoon so uh, that's how we're handling it just uh, smaller crowds and uh, we're working on the you know the next uh, engagement with uh, some uh, some additional friends so that's how we're handling it so uh, let's get into the selfie challenge. <laughs> and uh, over the last, uh, say, 72 hours, um, we've had several brownouts. And I think it's linked to the storm Ooh. that has gone through. Yeah. So guys, I'm way behind on emails. I'm trying to keep up with comments. Uh, we're trying to keep up with the selfie challenge. Um, but when there's uh, no Wi-Fi, um, I have to use my Dito SIM card and I can only get service if I'm sitting outside. So I'm trying to answer comments and trying to put together the selfie challenge, uh, getting all the pictures done correctly um, and editing uh, from outside. So that's why I'm so far behind on emails. I will catch up at some point. Uh, so today's first selfie challenge. It's a good one. Um, it's our son, yes. Christopher. We're so proud of Christopher. He uh, just recently graduated from John Jay uh, in Manhattan, four-year degree. Then he uh, took the test to become a state trooper, a New York state trooper, got accepted, uh, was part of the first class. Uh, he got through his six months training, uh, call it boot camp, because I have a video of uh, what he went through. Ugh. And I may show some of that. It was like being in the Marines for sure. Yes. Just amazing. Six months long was the uh, academy. Uh, so now he's a full-fledged state trooper and he's out on the road. So our son, Christopher. All right, so next up is Michael and Janine. Uh, they recently moved to Cebu, and uh, they're from Maine, USA. Thanks, guys, uh, for participating in the uh, selfie challenge. So uh, I want to tell everyone that Michael and Janine have their own YouTube channel. And it's called Now Living in the Philippines. So you guys should uh, check out that channel and consider subscribing. Uh, Wilma and I did. And uh, we watched, I think, about six or seven videos right. so far. Yeah. <laughs> They're a relatively new couple uh, to the Philippines. They moved from Maine. And uh, they're both American. 
and they started their own YouTube channel. So that is unique. Yes. <laughs> it's unique because again, I'm gonna say, and these are just my numbers, 99% of the couples that move here, usually it's a, a foreigner man and a Filipina that retired to the Philippines. But this couple is both American. So uh, I think it's a nice twist. Yes. And uh, consider subscribing, guys. Uh, we did. And uh, again, it's called Now Living in the Philippines. All right. So uh, next up is Lawrence and Lawrence Jr., uh, his son, uh, from Komote, Cebu. And what they did was uh, kind of a unique twist <laughs> on the selfie challenge. Uh, so take a look. All right, guys, so uh, let's get to today's update, and we're starting off with uh, Wilma finishing her uh, chicken and pork adobo. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Uh, I took up the uh, pork and the chicken. Now I'm gonna uncover it. So I'm gonna start with the pork because they uh, take um, longer to cook. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna brown the pork first. And you see how there's a little bit of fat and trying to take out the oil out of it. So that's our first step. All right guys, um, you notice that there's no oil on my pan. And uh, the reason for that is I'm gonna just use the uh, oil come out from the pork. So this is what we're gonna do first. We're gonna brown it and I have the stove on on low, so we had to just cook it on low for a while until it all dries and brown. And the uh, oil will come out of it. See all that fat here? There's a piece. You have to have a little fat for uh, taste. So I just have it on low, so it's going to take a while, guys. All right, guys, so um, the way I cook my um, adobo, especially with the pork, I cook them very slow and let it simmer. And I uh, stir it like maybe every 15 minutes. Because what I'm doing right now, I'm going to brown this uh, pork. And as you see, there's a little uh, fat on it. Because that's the uh, pork belly. And uh, I'm going to let all the, the oil come out. And I'm gonna use that oil to cook this uh, adobo. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the chicken. I'm gonna use the fat from, from the pork to cook the, to brown the chicken. So that's what I'm doing. And as you see, it's, uh, it's on low. And just let it simmer. Hey guys, it's been about 30 minutes now. And as you can see, it starts to brown really nicely. And the total cooking time with my adobo, especially with pork, will be like uh, two hours. So, so it's been 30 minutes now. So you can see it's browning up really good. And over here, Greg, show over here because they want to see uh, my ingredients. That's the ingredients. So, um, that's the garlic and onions, uh, crushed peppers and a whole pepper, and it's a brown sugar and the bay leaves. And it's optional, optional guys. Uh, you can use either uh, lime or lemon or um, vinegar. Or most, you know, a lot of people use vinegar. And also the soy sauce. I didn't put the soy sauce on. So, look at it guys, it's doing good. All right guys, uh, you see that my uh, pork is all nice and brown now. There's a lot of oil, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to drain it up here. Just have to go slowly get it's hot. Because there's a lot of oil coming out of it. Oh. One piece just fell off. Okay. Now you can uh, 
see it's a lot of oil that's a lot so I'm gonna use that oil to brown my uh, chicken all right guys so now what I'm doing the final step now that I have my uh, pork all brown so I'm gonna use a little bit of oil that came out of that uh, pork I'm gonna brown this a uh, little bit of uh, garlic just let it simmer let it brown and half of this onion the other half is for the uh, chicken so just let the garlic and onion brown and then once it's all brown I'm gonna put the pork back in here and then I'm gonna add uh, one cup of uh, water that way uh, just let it cook for another um, half hour I just let it cook very slow because uh, I want my uh, my pork to be tender I just use a very little uh, oil to uh, brown this um, onions and garlic because there's a lot of oil out of that pork already and I do not like it with too much oil on it okay, so I put the uh, pork back in and I did add uh, one cup of water because I wanted to cook uh, a little more like maybe the 20 minutes this pork is completely different than uh, chicken just chicken cook fast. So actually chicken, you can have it done in 40 minutes. You can have, once your uh, chicken's marinated overnight, the next day you just uh, brown the chicken and um, mix it all up and it will cook in 30 minutes. But the pork, I like to cook them longer is because I do not like them uh, hard. I, I like them to be uh, tender, you know? So uh, that's why I add, uh, one cup of water, and I just let it uh, simmer for another half an hour. Just keep an eye on it, so make sure you don't burn or let you know the water uh, go down. Uh, so this is the uh, ingredients for the chicken. I already browned the chicken, see how they're already here? So once that's done, I'm gonna add all that here. And then I just let the chicken simmer. So I'm gonna just add a little bit of, maybe half a cup of water for the chicken because it's a, a small amount too. And then I just let it simmer. Already, so uh, pork, it takes about a couple hours. It's because I want, it, I want the uh, pork to get, be tender. And uh, chicken, it would take about 40 to 45 minutes. Because chicken cook fast, that's why I separate them. So now it's ready to be served. Let's quickly show you uh, the setup for today's lunch. <laughs> you can see uh, pork adobo, got some rice, some chicken, mashed potatoes, of course more rice, <laughs> some more adobo, looking good. So let's eat. So one of the things um, that you need to consider when you live here in the Philippines is uh, humidity control. Um, humidity here, both inside and outside, is it ranges from like 80% humidity, as high as knocking on 90%. And I don't, I've never seen it less than 80% humidity. Mm -hmm. Um, so we bought something. So Wilma's going to go ahead and open it up. Um, what it is, it's some kind of a humidity control. It wasn't that expensive. It was like, uh, I think about 400 pesos. So that's not bad. $8. It's three uh, boxes and it has some kind of uh, like pebbles in it and that will collect humidity and will actually uh, take the humidity out of the air and it traps the humidity um, in the bottom. So Wilma's gonna pop this open. We're doing our first Building the Philippines unboxing. <laughs> so 
Yeah, so it's uh, something different. Let's see what it is. It's called Blade Dehumidifier. Uh, compact yet fully absorbs moisture. All right, I'm not sure why it has a car there. Maybe uh, you can put it in your car, I, I guess. But what we're gonna do is uh, we're just gonna put this like maybe one in her bedroom, maybe two in the walk-in closet or something like that. And let's just see what happens. Now what we do on a regular basis is we keep the uh, screens open. And uh, we also typically, it's not open right now, but we keep this door open as well. So we have really good airflow but in the master bedroom, uh, not so much. So that's why we said, let's, let's try this. So it looks like it's some type of pellets. Let's turn this. See, this top portion is full of white pellets. And supposedly, once you open this uh, foil, and I guess put this lid on, uh, humidity, it will grab the humidity, and then you can see on the bottom where it's just uh, open, um, the humidity drops in there. So again, is it going to work? Don't know. Uh, but with humidity control, because you know when you uh, get your clothes out of the uh, closet, um, they do feel a little damp. So we put a fan in there. Uh, we haven't any problems with mold or anything like that. Haven't experienced that yet. Yeah. Um, but it's the clothes are damp. sometimes feel a little damp. Yeah. So we said, hey, if you buy a couple of these. Would this help? Um, you know, maybe we could buy an actual dehumidifier because we did run electricity uh, into the master closet. There's two outlets, one on either side. So that's another option. But again, we're just, uh, you know, just trying things out. We wanted to, to do, uh, obviously, the, the cheapest uh, way. And uh, three of these was uh, $8. So we'll go ahead and open them up today, get them in place. And uh, we'll let you guys know uh, if uh, they work or not. All right, puppy update. So uh, mommy's been doing good. She really defends her doghouse when we had uh, friends up. She was barking and growling. Boy, she did not want anybody uh, to be by the puppies. So where are they at? Oh, there they are. They're moving around. All right, so let me get in there. Try to zoom in a little bit. They're doing good. Can you see them in there? All right, so what I'm gonna do, and of course, Sandy wants uh, to steal the air time here. But again, I can barely see them. I think I got it centered. Uh, one gray, one black. I have to hold uh, Sandy and pet her. Let me show you what I'm doing here. So I have to, <laughs> I have to just give her some love while uh, I'm videoing. But uh, it's working out good. What Wilma's doing is every uh, couple days putting in uh, some new cardboard and things like that just to keep them dry, but uh, she's been checking them. If you can see, do you see that shininess in the back? That's that thick plastic that we use for the pool heater. So that's uh, draped uh, across the back. So that's keeping them dry. They're high and dry. Uh, with all this rain that we've been getting, we're good to go. The storm has passed us now. I think we'll get a few days of uh, hopefully uh, no rain, but look at how they're sleeping, <laughs> sleeping on each other. They're getting bigger. Um, I still have not reached in there, Wil Wilma not either. We have not touched them yet uh, because uh, I think they're just one week old. I think today is seven days, so they're only seven days old, but they look they look healthy, and uh, we do hear them making noise a little bit. But uh, it looks like they're uh, taking a nap. The gray one's moving around a little bit. Look at the, the white in the back of the head of the uh, gray one. <laughs> See the white face? And white front paws. So that's going to be a good looking dog. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to ask our subscribers and viewers that live in the greater Dumaguete area if anyone is interested in adopting one of these puppies look at the white belly it's gonna be a good looking uh, good looking puppy and like I said the other one is all black so uh, this time we would like uh, to adopt the uh, puppies to a foreigner 
and uh, there's a specific reason for that and I'm not going to go into it right now um, but we want to adopt these puppies uh, to a foreigner um, so if interested uh, you can just uh, drop us a email at buildingthephilippines at gmail.com or Facebook Messenger um, at Building the Philippines if indeed you're in this area and you'd be interested. So, you know, typically you let the dogs, uh, the puppies grow to like 8, 10 weeks, get them nice and healthy, get them weaned uh, from their mom, eating solid food, and then uh, they're ready to go. So uh, that's what we want to do. And take a look at Sandy. I think she's falling asleep. <laughs> what a good girl. She's such a good watchdog. She stays on the property, and I think I have to zoom in. Let me take the zoom out. She is just such a good watchdog. Unfortunately, she's a, a really big digger. I've been talking about that for the longest time. But uh, if anybody gets within, you know, say 70, 80 meters from the house, she'll start barking. Uh, and then if they get, say, 10 meters from the house, she absolutely uh, tears into them. She'll chase them <laughs> and growl at them. Um, so she's a real good alarm system. Day or night, she'll do that. And uh, so we know her up at the house. If we hear her barking, uh, we know there's somebody in the area. So, and then if we really hear her go crazy, we know somebody's close. And uh, other than that, you don't hear a peep out of her. Uh, so that's uh, Sandy Girl. There's the two puppies, and this is uh, the puppy update.